Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. I'm here in Boxburg in Germany at the Bosch Proving Ground for a day that I find extremely interesting always. This is a day where I get to experience all the technologies that are going to be in the cars of the future. So I'm going to get into them, show you around and see what you expect in the cars of tomorrow. <laughs> technology we were interested in was the way of the future, the electric powertrain. This is a pure electric car and it has not only one electric motor but four electric motors. One motor acting to each wheel. And this gives us the opportunity to do torque vectoring. Which means that we are able to distribute the torque to the electric motors in a very special way so that we can completely change the driving behavior of the car. For example, we can make the car really safe. Let's say like a Rolls Royce. I can demonstrate this on a slalom track. As you can see, the car is only under steering. My steering input is very large. I have to steer a lot, but the vehicle is very safe. It will never skid, it will never slide it will always lie very safe on the track. On the racetrack, I it's would... It's no fun. <laughs> it's no fun. <laughs> on the racetrack, I would prefer a completely different, different behavior of the car. It should be neutrally balanced, perhaps slightly oversteering. And this is... And for a slalom, you'd like the tail to come out a bit. Yes. The tail has to work yeah. together with the front. Yeah. to get the maximum performance out of the car. And this is what we do now. As you can see, yeah. I have to steer much less, yeah. but the vehicle is skidding and we are using the rear tires just as much as the front right. tires. And by that, we get the maximum performance out of the car. What is it that, that you know, where are the sensors? Is it at the steering wheel? Is it at the tires? So this system uses the sensors that we usually use in the ESP system, which is the lateral acceleration sensor, the yaw rate sensor, the steering angle sensor, and the wheel speed sensors. Okay. But the difference to a standard ESP system, the biggest difference is that we do not react, but we anticipate. And the secret about the system is the controller that distributes the torque and it has a mathematical model of the car inside. Okay. And this model has physical parameters like the wheelbase, like the steering transmission, like the mass. And you can just change these parameters and the controller will make sure that the vehicle will behave just like a car with the parameters that you entered. Okay, so say we're in an Audi now. So you can actually get the Audi to behave like a different car. Yes with the parameters that you feed into the ECU? Yes, for sure we have a limit. Okay. This is the friction between the tire and Absolutely, the road yeah. and the maximum engine torque. So we cannot make a Formula One car out of Correct, this, yeah. but we can perhaps make a Porsche out of this car. Well, we were moving from four wheels to two. on the brakes in an emergency on a two-wheeler and that's exactly what happens. Now, our test driver had protective sidebars. Remember, out on the streets, you won't. It may cost you a little bit more, but here's what ABS will do. Well, it looks a bit boring, doesn't it? The action's not so spectacular as it was before, but that was without ABS and this is with ABS. In emergency braking, it can be your life-saving device. Okay, so bike ABS is not exactly new. So what really was the innovation? Yeah, the base system you have seen before is especially for scooter where we have uh, less uh, bike dynamics. 
Uh, for the main reason on the new uh, system now, we have to, uh, reduced the, the box volume, which now allows our uh, customers to install ABS in each kind of bikes. And here now you can see that the new system, uh, which is called the plus system. So here we use an additional uh, pressure sensor and as you can see, the bike is very dynamic and has a strong tendency for lift up of the rear wheel. So this was with ABS off. So and in the next turn, we will see the same uh, with ABS switched on. And there you can see that the bike becomes very stable. The rear wheel is not lifting. So and with the ABS, the, the bike is very stable. And at the end, you can see a very short braking distance. And the development target, we had first target to reduce the box volume because then we are able to install ABS in all kinds of bikes. And with that, the volume of the production increases significantly and in, due to that also the costs are going down. Now in India, when you transition from a two-wheeler to a car, what do we think of? The little nano. That's exactly what we caught up with next. Bosch is working on a power steering for the Nano that will give it assist up to 30 km an hour. Which means in traffic conditions and in parking, which is exactly what I tried, it will be a whole lot easier. And it was. While talking about easy parking, here's a technology to make it even easier. What we're doing now is um checking out a prototype which is still in development of a surround view system. Uh, great for women who want to park in tight spots, I guess. Uh, I know he's dying to say that, but he just hasn't yet. I'm not uh, allowed. <laughs> but uh, uh, really uh, amazing to see, as you can see on the camera, it gives you a vision entirely like a bird's eye view uh, on this. Uh, the refinement still to be done is the, is the relative motion of other objects that are moving in comparison to the car. But we're going to park into a spot and we're going to see exactly how it works. So we will see a parking spot to our right. So we have here the rear view camera and we have the top view system and I will only do the parking by looking on the screen. So you can see, I will want to take the second parking spot and you can see that I'm really disaligned right now. Yeah. So I will do one correction move and finish my parking maneuver very easily Wow! and stand nearly perfectly between these two lines. Also what we can see is that we have some small cones in our back. I'm not able to see the cones in the back with the mirror. Because mirrors. they're lower than the level of the car. They are, they are not in my field of view and the rear view camera enables me to see really small objects. And you can imagine children playing in the streets or I don't know what's, what's running around, bicycles or anything else which you, can, which you are unable to see with one view on your head-up display and if we increase our movement detection we will even highlight the objects in the future. So also maybe one thing we can show also is like that we have a really good resolution of the picture. Yeah. You can even see, see the, the, cobblestones, yeah. the small stones, you see that there is some, some minor problems in some areas but it's a really really nice view. There were a host of technologies to see and this was really a car geek's paradise but I knew I had to fit it into a limited time on our show. So I picked the best of the bunch and what caught my eye next were the big bold letters Extreme Downsizing. We're now in a uh, car that's using the downsizing. Um, this is a 1.2 litre turbocharged engine in a car that normally runs on a 2.4 litre engine and let's see what's the difference. Initially, no, but let's find out more about the system. So, um, can you tell us more about the system? Yeah, the system is, uh, as you told, a three-cylinder with a 1.2-litre displacement. We have a one-stage turbocharger system installed on it. The turbocharger is from BMTS. This is a joint venture of Bosch and Male. The main aim is to reduce CO2 emission with a smaller displacement installed on the engine. It just doesn't feel 
underpowered at all. And it's pleasantly through the range. Yeah. Which is which is just amazing. So with this concept we reach a fuel consumption of 4.9 5.9 liters per 100 kilometer, uh, that equals 140 gram per kilo meter CO2 emission. And this is about 30% less than uh, compared to the 2.4 liter with uh, a natural, naturally aspirated engine. Well, that's what downsizing is all about, getting a smaller engine to power a bigger car. And we've seen it in the likes of the TSI engine in Skoda Superb in India. But a 1.2-litre three-cylinder car for a 1.5-ton is really extreme. It uses a single-stage turbo and electronics from Bosch that optimize all the functions to churn out a very respectable 161 bhp from about 5,000 rpm. And it did feel like that out on the road too. It didn't feel underpowered at all. And though we felt a small amount of lag, once the engine got breathing, it never felt like it was less and power was on tap throughout the range. Well, an amazing day. My head is buzzing with information. In fact, it's information overload just now. So many new things to learn. Particularly interesting to me was the 1.2 litre three-cylinder downsized engine. Now, I think that's going to be something we're really going to see in the cars of tomorrow. Imagine that, a Passat with a 1.2 litre engine, that would be very interesting fuel economy figures. Well, that's not all. I've got more for you because I'm going to be back here tomorrow at the track doing some ABS testing and lots more. That'll be on the other side of this break. <laughs>